And uh, our next uh, and last session for today is the Roundtable Investors on Web3 uh, be, to be led with by, uh, by Vanessa. Vanessa, the stage is yours. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you so much, Gavin, for joining us. Hi, uh, again, I'm Vanessa Pistrito. I'm Director of Partner Programs at Agoric. And uh, we've put together this panel of investors on Web3 as we're looking to bring more um, VCs to the table to create an understanding for a lot of you folks that might want to be able to build in Web3. As some background, uh, I raised a fund in 2016. I have experience in deploying capital with pre-seed and seed level investments since as early as 2012. Uh, and when I transitioned to a, another company role in 2018, I had met Agoric and numerous other investments. Um, I made 15 investments in that role where uh, I got to co-invest with a few of the panelists that are here today. So I'll ask uh, Dusan, Chris, and Shores to just give a short intro, and then we'll dive into a discussion on opportunities in the Web3 space and what they think will be the next big thing. Dusan, can you uh, please introduce yourself? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Vanessa. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Dusan Kovacic. Uh, I'm leading uh, an, a fund called RBF, Rockway Blockchain Fund. We are investors in blockchain since 2017. So we uh, invested initially in the infrastructure space uh, where we see you know that, that there will be a problem in scaling ethereum which has materialized actually recently from the most notable investments that we did um, uh, that are quite popular these days are solana terra one inch um, we are quite happy uh, investors of agoric as well uh, originally my background was uh, is in software engineering i was uh, an it security engineer uh, and then I uh, left my job and I was like, I will figure out something myself and crypto is really like a place to be. So yeah, that's that's very quickly about me and about us. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you so much. Uh, Chris, can you please introduce yourself? Thanks, Vanessa. Hi, I'm Chris. Um, I run a firm called Placeholder, uh, which invests in decentralized information networks. And prior to founding Placeholder, I led ARK Invest's crypto practice, um, including their initial investment in Bitcoin back in 2015. And um, yeah, generally fascinated by the space. Awesome. And Shores? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shores Wittefein. I'm working at an investment firm called Lemniscap. Uh, we are an investment firm specializing in investments in uh, emerging uh, crypto assets and blockchain startups. Uh, and my role there is uh, yeah, setting out the technical uh, vision and strategy uh, together with uh, taking care of the European region. Uh, my background is technical, so prior to Lemniscap, I used to work for a large e-commerce company uh, where I was a technology director. And uh, prior to that, I used to be a network and um, uh, infrastructure specialist. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us here today. And uh, there's the audience here is a lot of Web2 developers that are looking to get into Web3. And we had Miko give us a really wonderful overview of opportunities and early ecosystems and the growth of what he was calling gumicorns, but unicorns, decacorns, whatever they might be. Um, it would be helpful if you share a bit on anyone can answer this or kick off on the opportunities that you're excited about for this coming year as people think about where they might want to work or what they might want to build um yeah i can start with that i mean what i'm really personally excited about in uh, web3 is really anything that comes to uh interoperability and yeah basically multi-chain uh communication it's it's a problem that we have been seeing for years uh, where you basically have one uh, blockchain platform that's yeah not able to communicate with uh, yeah any other blockchain platform. So uh, yeah, generally I'm very excited about anything uh, interoperability and uh, multi-chain communication. So as as for myself, I mean um, interoperable uh, interoperability as George is uh, is is excited. I'm excited as well. Uh, though it's like very technical, I, I would say there is a lot of like security assumptions that need to be considered, and I think it's uh, it's it's something that uh, will take um, years to develop properly. Uh, like from the interoperability protocols, I see you know that I'm most excited about Axelar, for probably 
which is like the general purpose uh, communication platforms between blockchains. Though, like in addition to that, uh, one of the areas that I'm like super excited about are uh, NFTs and especially in the social context. And I really, see, I, 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 I like to compare the era of NFTs into the era of Bitcoin early, where it's like very, I would say, um, uh, the, 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 it's, it's like very polarizing, you know, like some of the people think NFTs are, are just JPEGs, you know, like stored on blockchain. I, I totally disagree. For me, it's more about like, if you are buying an NFT, you are becoming part of the club. Uh, and and uh, NFTs are serving as, as like an entry tickets to those clubs. Like if you buy a Ferrari, you are part of the Ferrari club. And these clubs are now purely digital, where the distribution is like infinite compared like where you are, where you are having a Ferrari and, and you are just, you know, coming to a place with your Ferrari. Now you, you have a, like you have an, an ape or you have a punk and everybody knows like you have a punk. And uh, I think the, there is a lot of value to be unlocked in like social interactions between uh, the holders or between these uh, this particular clubs. So that's something I'm super excited about. I would jump in um, with if, if we look at the big applications thus far of crypto, of um, DeFi, NFTs and DAOs. I think if you look at DeFi on Ethereum, it went through its first big boom over the last couple of years. Um, but then TVL across the crypto ecosystem is about 150 billion, uh, which is still, you know, really small compared to traditional finance. And so I think the next few years, we're going to have experimentation with DeFi ecosystems um, on different chains, you know, and Agoric being one um, where, you know, as we, we get that experimentation and hopefully maturation, we'll get better capital efficiency we'll have fewer hacks, we'll have better user experiences. And it's not that Ethereum's DeFi is going away. Um, it's just there's room for other ecosystems to complement um, the maturation of DeFi. Um, along the lines of what was just said around NFTs, I think you can look at 2021 for NFTs as similar to what 2017 was for ICOs. So in 2017, there was a big boom of capital raising it was pretty static. Um, the capital was raised on a bunch of promises. Um, but that capital raising boom in 2017 is what then financed the development of DeFi in 18, 19, and 20. And so if you if you take that progression and look at NFTs, NFTs in 2021 were mostly static. Um, and they are going social now. I think you can think of them as going interactive. So people trying to figure out, okay, you have a set of 10,000 holders or 5,000 holders of a project that are very emotionally committed. What can you get those holders to do together? Um, and then that's where DAOs start to come in as somewhere between a company and a Facebook group um, for getting people to coordinate around shared resources. Um, also on the interactive front with NFTs, there's a lot of activity around gaming, right? So gamers for a long time have butted up against the walled gardens of the game developers um, and not really owning the characters that they create or the resources of the game. I think we're going to start to see every resource um, be a fungible token and then every rare character character be a non-fungible token. Um, and that's going to start to open up how people think about work uh, and play within the gaming universe. That's, that's fantastic. A really great overview. Thank you, all three of you, for your input. I'm as you describe and walk through this DeFi ecosystem growth and interoperability in gaming and all these areas, it's just this huge broadening that of an opportunity where we need people to come and build here and work with us as well. Are there any uh, expert types or um, skill types that you think we need to, the, the ecosystems would benefit from? <laughs> I honestly think that the ecosystem, like all of the ecosystems will, will like, it, it's like Mr. Obvious, yeah, but, but from the innovators, yeah, they, they try to, you know, uh, get their hands dirty. Um, I mean, I'm like, you guys in the US um, are, are probably much better than it that, for example, us uh, in Europe, I am now in, in Prague and, and I, I'm living this for the past 10 years. And here, you know, the, the environment is, 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 I would say, very static in regards like building new platforms platforms and protocols and innovating. 
so so I think we we all need to, and have this uh, responsibility to to bring as as many innovators into the space as we possible as we possibly can. For example, we are doing it by by teaching on universities on how to do blockchain development and so. On. Yeah, and and I think to uh, to complement that uh, and to add to that is um, yeah, what what we could really see in the Web three space is. Um, yeah, basically the scalability solutions that we have been using in Web2 uh, already. So basically building uh, applications, uh, decentralized applications with, for example, scalability in mind instead of, yeah, just uh, hacking something together and putting it live. Uh, I think also a lot of security risks uh, uh, some that, you, that you already brought up are uh, coming from there as well, that, that we are basically rushing uh, uh, stuff to production. Uh, yeah, without going through the proper uh, development phases, as how we are using uh, or we're used to do that in um, in Web two. Um, and another another thing is that really on the uh, UI and UX, and I think Chris, you you briefly mentioned something about it already uh, as well. But I think uh, yeah, the UI and UX elements of uh, a lot of these decentralized applications. Uh, can be improved as one. Well. A lot of um, the existing tools that we have been using in, in Web 2.0 and skills uh, can actually yeah be reused in Web 3.0, whether that's uh, testing frameworks like A-B testing or usability tests uh, in order to tailor the, the user interfaces and the experience to, uh, uh, yeah, to really the end user of the decentralized applications. So, I, I agree with everything that's been said. I think, you know, if we step back and look at the progression of crypto, um, it was, cr crypto is a very young industry for the most part. And in some ways you need that naivete to try and attempt the impossible. Um, but then as you start to mature, I think there is a great thirst for experts um, and people with a lot more experience to come into crypto on the tech side, on the economic side, on the political side, um, on the you know social structuring side, which overlaps with political. But um, the the mm -hmm. the tricky thing there is, um, I I don't think that experts can come in and say we have to do things this way because it's how it's always been done. It's more understanding. Um, the ethos of the underlying project that an expert would be contributing to, making sure there's alignment there, and then helping um, people who don't have as much experience avoid making obvious mistakes. Um, I think if you if you think of crypto as a recreation of the physical world in the digital space, then we're recreating almost everything, um, and mm -hmm. there's there's too much um, reinvention of wheels almost everywhere that you look, where a seasoned expert who has the trust of the community could help guide um, lots of different groups in more effective directions. And so I think there's a huge opportunity there, but it has to be done um, without condescension, right? Because the second there's condescension, crypto has been, has been fighting for a long time for relevance and for people to say, okay, this is here to stay, and I think it's finally getting to that place. But the people who have been around for a long time are going to be very allergic um, to uh, anyone who is condescending to them because it's been so much of the experience to date. And if I if I can follow on on Chris, I would say it's a uh, I, I agree there is a lot of experts that needs to be brought in the in the crypto space. Though they are trying, you know, like when I when I'm seeing in in, in my view. They're always trying to frame it the way they understand it without like understanding the core principles of, of crypto and Web3. Web3 and, and, but I think it should be the other way. As you said, like we have like these core principles of Web3, like the decentralization of ownership, which I would like to highlight. Though <clears throat> it's, it's like today, it's like most of the products are about distributing the ownership without actually uh, focusing on whether the product is good or not. Yeah. So, so I would say like we need experts that, that can that are coming from the web two, which are really great at building products that that customers mm -hmm. love and use, and apply it, apply on it the, the narrative of distributed ownership of web three, and I, then I think we will have like really amazing platforms. 
I appreciate a lot of what's being said here, especially, um, you know, experts can bring some uh, contribution, but you're correct where they have to be quite open minded and understanding a lot of what is at stake and what is open to them. And I, I think that, you know, it would be helpful if you, each of you could share at what stage you guys invest in, but also for people who have raised capital in Web 2, how should they think about raising in Web 3 and how it might be different compared to um, if they're a repeat founder or have tried raising capital in the past? How's it different for Web 3 um, raising? I, I can kick it off. I'd say it's different in Web 3 because um, you have the choice around, are you going to raise based off of your equity, or are you going to raise based off of a crypto asset that you might launch in the future? Um, and some people combine the two. Um, so for example, let's say you have a development company that's going to launch a protocol uh, within the Agoric ecosystem. If that development company is going to keep 20% of the total supply of the future crypto asset, and you know that future crypto asset is going to be valued at 100 million fully diluted network valuation then the development company would be worth 20 million dollars the 20 percent of the 100 and then you could raise say 4 million into that development company and sell 20 percent of the development company or four percent of the uh, future supply and so that would be um the uh napkin math uh, uh around how the equity of a development company would relate to um, the network value. The, the, the more common structure these days is to sell equity alongside a warrant. Um, and the warrant is the thing that gives the, the right to the token. Um, but there's still you know, a discussion around, OK, what is uh, that, that network value? I would also say, um, in terms of raising, crypto is so boom bust. Um, that uh, the private markets follow the public markets with some lag. So um, last year was a super hot year for the public markets. The private markets are still riding off of that. Um, and so valuations are still very strong. But were the public markets to, to fall apart here, um, you would see private market valuations start to come back in. Um, and so that's just a consideration for um, dilution, you know, when times are good, you can raise more with less dilution as an entrepreneur. Uh, in terms of placeholder, we invest in the private markets at the seed and series A stage. Anything that goes past um, those types of valuations, we tend to just get involved as a public market investor. So we're a bit of a unique VC uh, in that I have a public markets background from ARC, whereas my two partners are coming out of Unisquare Ventures and so have um, purebred venture backgrounds. Uh, so if I can follow on, um, we in RBF are investing into seed stage series A uh, type of deals, um, preferably. Uh, we, we do a ticket between one to five million. This is our sweet spot. We can do up to 10, though we prefer one to five. Um, we can also do secondary market investments, uh, similar to what placeholder does, we also do uh, purchase uh, tokens on secondary market if we have a conviction on the ecosystem, um, which which we are going to support. For example, we have um, as, as an RBF, we have a lot of interest into the Cosmos ecosystem, which we perceive Agoric is, is part of. So as, as a result of that, we, we build our investment thesis around Atom and we purchase Atom on secondary. Um, All right, yeah, and Lenny's Cap, we are uh, mostly doing pre-seed or seed. That's where we feel the most comfortable uh, and do follow-up tickets in, in Series A uh, of our previous investments. Uh, so where we really like to deploy is if there's just yeah a, a founder with a, with a good idea uh, that they want to build out uh, on paper and then start supporting them. Um, yeah, basically from from there in the in the pre-seed stage. Um, and what is really different, I, I think, uh, to come uh, back to your question, Vanessa, on yeah, what makes investing in Web3 different than Web2? Uh, yeah, I think right now capital is really not the, uh, not the issue in the space. I think we have all been seeing you know, the amount of funds that have been launched over you know, the last couple of months. Um, so it's really about um, 
Yeah, sticking to your investment thesis and then uh, uh, together with uh, trying to add value er early on uh, to the to the projects and companies uh, that you are investing in. Um, I'm not sure how much that is different from from Web two. I mean, I haven't been around in, in investing in uh, Web two or being part of an investment firm there, uh, but I guess that is that is definitely something that's applicable in Web three. Um, Together with, uh, like like you said, Chris, um, is that yeah, you, you either have equity or tokens, and in case uh, it's an investment with tokens, it actually gives you rights uh, to actively participate um, uh, in the projects and the companies that you are investing in, whether that is a decentralized finance uh, protocol or uh, a blockchain uh, layer one uh, platform. Uh, you can actually put um uh, yeah your investment to work uh, in the project or uh, company that you invested in so if i can if i can add uh, on top shares what sure said is uh yeah the, i think the difference is is between the web 2 and web 3 web 3 is really the the value add um we are speaking with a lot of uh web 2 investment funds for example index ventures or credo here that are that are local in czech republic and, and and comparing to us, the, the traditional Web2 investing has never been so technical like, like Web3. For example, if we are investing into a Cosmos project, we are straight away starting a validator and start to support the network from also like running it. We are not running it on AWS or any like uh, cloud service. We are uh, we have our own rack in, in the data center of, of our investor. And, and we, we start to understand uh, not only um, the, the the high level goals but also like what is happening uh, uh from the from the technological level which gives us like much more insight on on what is uh, happening on the chain and then we can uh, improve our decision making yeah like for example when we see like in really what is really great in blockchain is that most of the data or most of the traction data are public so you can monitor in real time how a business is is or how a protocol is actually um, um, doing in terms of traction, uh, assuming it is live, which gives you a, like a lot more power to, uh, to and a lot more utility on or op opportunities or I would say ability to decide better than than in traditional uh, businesses where you always have a kind of a delay in information that you get as an investor. Also, I would like to add that in 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 crypto, you don't always have to. Uh, raise from from VCs like us, you can also decide to go with the public route, yeah, like through the ICO or token sales or, or NFT sales, uh, which is something we uh, as VCs even in this market, especially in this market, have to uh, have to also like um, I would say compete with because right now everybody is a is a VC in in Web3 space, which uh, which can result in in a perception of a venture investor to be really skewed towards just uh, uh, investing into everything but i think uh, um, i think you know over time as 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 he's uh, said the valuations will uh, will come down right now we are seeing um, the private markets raising at 1 billion uh, on on products which are pre launch which is i would say very much um, overhyped so as soon as the public markets uh, come down a little bit, we, we will see hopefully also these private uh, markets coming down, which will give us as a VCs, uh, again, a better opportunities to support founders. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I, I realize we're at time here and I wanted to thank our panelists for joining us. Uh, you can follow them on Twitter. Uh, they share the stages that they invest in. Uh, if there's any final thoughts or things that you would like to share of how they can get best in touch with you or what you're most interested in seeing next, I invite our panelists just to share those final thoughts and then we can wrap up. That's everything for me. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. All right. Yes, thank you a lot. And uh, yeah, you can find us online. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and uh, yeah, just shoot us a message if you're building anything interesting in the space. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as uh, Dushkovaci. Um, ID. If you guys are building anything on Agoric, let me know. I'm very happy to excite uh, to, to, to understand like how we can help as investors as well.
Wonderful. Well, thank you all for joining us. I think that wraps up our day. I'll, I'll hand it over to Jeff for final thoughts. And uh, I'm Vanessa Dice on Twitter or Vanessa Dice if you speak Spanish. And thank you so much.